about 50, 5-0% of the population has trouble sleeping from time to time. 15, 1-5% of the population has chronic insomnia. Welcome back to another episode of our masterclass, uh, Your Journey to Soulful Sleep, with sleep expert and psychologist, Dr. Shelby Harris from New York. Everyone experiences problems with sleep at some time during their life, but yeah. when do you know if it's just a sleep problem that you will or can overcome with habits, or that you actually need more specific help, specialist help? Yeah, I think there's a few things to think about. So. One is, it's like you said, it's normal to have a bad night of sleep here and there. So if you're someone who just occasionally has a bad night, fine. The way I like to think about it is there's something called chronic insomnia. So what is chronic insomnia? That is it, having at least three nights a week where you're not happy with how you're sleeping at night, and it happens for at least three months every week. Oh, wow. So you're having three bad nights a week, for at least three months. So that's when it becomes more of an issue. If you have one bad night here and there, it's nothing to get so upset about. So that's the chronic insomnia thing, and that's when you should talk to your doctor, because you can do all the things that we're talking about the masterclass, and hopefully that will help. But if it's not enough, and sometimes it's not, there are really wonderful treatments out there that can help, that do use medication, or don't, like my book is one option. So insomnia is something to think about. Then the other things that I often think about that I see a lot of times is something called sleep apnea. So if you feel like, even if you're sleeping well at night, you don't feel like your sleep is restorative, or you're very drowsy during the day, or you're having a lot of trouble with attention, concentration, you're dozing when you're sitting down. If any of that's happening, yeah. that's when you wanna start thinking, are there things that are impacting the quality of my sleep that I wanna to talk to my doctor about? So sleep apnea is a really, really common one, and a lot of people have this idea of it has to be an older man who's overweight, and it really doesn't. No. The most common sign of sleep apnea is snoring, and it's usually more loud snoring with pauses or choking and gasping, but actually in women, they're not presenting that way. So it can be snoring, but it doesn't have to be that really loud snoring that you can hear in the other room. It can be very, very quiet with little pauses. If you're feeling really sleepy during the day, if you have to wake up to use the bathroom many times at night, those are all symptoms of sleep apnea. There are many symptoms, but the snoring and the pauses and breathing very subtly and that fatigue or especially sleepiness yeah, during the day yeah. are really good things to notice and talk to your doctor about. And then the one other big thing that I see a lot of times is that people have trouble falling asleep, but it's more because their legs or their arms are very restless. So oh, I've had that. That's horrible. I have had it too. So it's very common in women, and it's really common in women when they're pregnant especially. Yeah. So, and I had it horribly when I was pregnant. And it's that feeling, that it's called restless leg syndrome, but yeah. it actually it's a misnomer because it can happen in your arms too. So it's this feeling as the night comes closer, you kind of have to keep moving around, you're very restless, you can't, and the only way it feels better is by moving or getting up and walking yeah. around. Some people even sit on the floor, like a cold tile floor can help them feel better, but that actually can make it harder for you to fall asleep. And sometimes it's as simple as an iron deficiency. So going to your doctor and having them test you to make sure that restless legs isn't, isn't an issue, or if it is an issue, seeing what you can do about it. There are many other sleep disorders that are out there, but if you find that you just don't feel like your sleep is restorative, you have trouble sleeping, you're trying the basic things that you've heard online or from this class, yeah. that's enough to talk to your doctor because there are many things that can be done. We're talking about a sleep disorder if you experience three days of bad sleeping for a period longer than three months. For insomnia. For insomnia. Yes. And if yeah. you find even a month is like long enough, I think, to go and talk to your doctor. But if you have, I mean, we're human beings. We have yeah. stress. So if you have a week or two where you're having a lot of stress and you're not sleeping great, don't automatically jump to saying, I have a big problem. But if it's been going on for a few weeks at that point, closer to a month, then you want to start saying, okay, maybe I need to start doing something much more about it. And then if it's been at least three months, then it's more of a chronic problem. You really need to address it. Did you ever have a patient that you couldn't help? There are definitely people that aren't able to be helped with behavioral treatments. And so I do cognitive behavior therapy for insomnia, which is a wonderful treatment, but it doesn't work for everyone. And so I think that it's a very much a tiered approach. We try to treat insomnia, especially without medications, but some people do need medication. Some people need to have hormone replacement. It's about finding what works for you that's the least invasive treatment that you can do. So how common is insomnia? 
So about 50, 50% of the population has trouble sleeping from time to time. Like that normal yeah. kind of, I'm not a great sleeper. Well, that's a lot night. actually also. It's still a lot, right? 15, 1-5% of the population has chronic insomnia. So that three months or more, three nights or more of poor sleep a week, it's huge. That's huge, right? It's huge. And there are so many effective treatments out there. Some people just don't do anything about it because they say, I'll sleep when I'm dead. And you know what? <laughs> yeah, but then the quality of your life doesn't improve either, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. And I've also heard that if you are suffering from chronic insomnia and you don't do anything about it, mm -hmm. that's only the moment you get to sleep properly again, you realize what, how much you've missed out on. Exactly, exactly. There are so many great treatments out there, so many options, medication and not medication, that you really need to find someone who will listen to you, who is an expert in insomnia, and don't just brush it off. So, I think it's safe to say, try all the tips, all the routines, and all the, uh, use all the information that Dr. Shelby uh, gave us in this masterclass. If yep. that doesn't help, then I you think can it's go. maybe time to uh, find a specialist. Yeah, or, because some people think that they have insomnia, they wake up in the middle of the night, can't go back to sleep, but guess what? It's because they have apnea and they're snoring and they stop breathing at night and they don't even know what happens. So if yeah. we fix the apnea, guess what? Their insomnia gets better. Unbelievable. Thank you for this uh, episode today. In the next episode is also going to be our last episode. So I think we're going to take a look back at everything we've learned. And uh, for all the people who are watching, I hope you will uh, sleep better tonight.